Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Rising, or welcome if you're new to the show. We do have a great show for you today. Uh, it is Wednesday. Ryan, Alyssa, what do we have? Max Alvarez and Robbie Suave are here for Team Rising to weigh in on the Texas court ru ruling that allows for the arrest of Texas Dems who left the chamber over voting restrictions. And Brianna Joy Gray is going to discuss Democrats' $3.5 trillion budget proposal and dig into what we can expect to see there. But first, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced his official resignation following sexual assault allegations. Let's watch. New York tough means New York loving. And I love New York. And I love you. And everything I have ever done has been motivated by that love. And I would never want to be unhelpful in any way. And I think that given the circumstances, the best way I can help now is if I step aside and let government get back to governing. Andrew Cuomo says he has never wanted to be unhelpful to New York ever. We're joined now by Ross Barkan, author of a new book on Andrew Cuomo, who's been covering the governor for many, many years. Uh, Ross, what, what do you make of the claim that, uh, that, that Governor Cuomo has never wanted to be unhelpful to the state of New York? I think maybe Andrew Cuomo believes that, but it's a lot more complicated than that. Andrew Cuomo has been governor of the state for 11 years almost, and he has really ruled with an iron fist. And most of what he's done has been about perpetuating his own power. There's no doubt he's had real accomplishments, but he's also had tremendous failures, starting with the coronavirus pandemic, the cover-up of nursing home deaths, and I am skeptical when he says he was doing it out of the selfless desire to help people when really, if you watch him closely, it really was about maintaining his position and dominating others, which he did very well until very recently. And Ross, you're kind of the resident expert on Cuomo. You've covered him in New York for a long time. Let me ask you. Um, I, I was bullish that he wasn't going to resign. I figured he would fight it out. This is a man who's kind of managed to live through a lot of different scandals. Do you take his decision to resign as wanting to preserve himself for some kind of a potential political comeback down the road? I, too, was surprised at the swiftness of his resignation. The truth is he had very few options left. It was either that or get impeached and convicted by the, the state Senate. It is possible he may try to explore a comeback. As long as he's not convicted in the Senate and he's not impeached, he is free to do that. Now, he may believe that it's possible, but the truth is a comeback would be quite difficult, even with his name recognition and money, because the political establishment has really moved on from him. And there are going to be a lot of people who are going to be interested in becoming governor, including the governor-to-be Kathy Hochul, and so he would have a hard, hard road back. But with Cuomo and his thirst for power, you never rule anything out. Not now, to we mention, have... you know, oh, go ahead. He, he is he is actually pretty charming. Uh, you know, so when you watch his resignation, you know, he has a way of talking that makes you almost feel sorry for the guy. Uh, I mean, he's he's and he's that's one of the reasons why people loved him throughout the pandemic, which is what, you know, got him to write the book and and people to praise him left and right was because he was very you know, he just has this way of speaking to people that kind of gets them on his side. So, you know, I am really curious. Do you think is there any discussion at all to do to Cuomo what Democrats did to Trump, whereas, you know, going after him once he's actually gone so that he cannot run again? Because I I envision you know, a possibility where Cuomo is able to sweet talk his way back into political life. There are members of the state assembly where impeachment would originate who want to impeach him. There are definitely younger, more progressive lawmakers who want to do that and stop him from running for office ever again. Now, will the assembly as a whole do it? Will the cautious speaker do it? That's another question entirely. So my instinct, given what I know about the assembly and what I've seen is they are a bit more of, of, of an older, moderate, uh, you know, more tepid body. And I don't necessarily see them impeaching him now, though there are definitely members on the younger side and the progressive side who would like to do it. Hmm. 
Now, we have Biden's reaction to the resignation. Let's watch together. I thought he's done a hell of a job. I thought he's done a hell of a job. And uh, I mean, both on everything from access to voting, to infrastructure, to a whole range of things. That's why it's so sad. I respect the governor's decision, and uh, I, uh, I respect the decision he made. And Ross, let me, Ross, let me ask you about, the, so he named two things, infrastructure and access to voting. Like, so let's just take those one by one. On, on infrastructure, the governor is in charge of the, the MTA. What, what's, been his, what's been his record on that? Well, I was going to say how horrendous access to voting is in New York, but we'll start with infrastructure. Infrastructure is a mixed bag at best. The subway system, which the MTA controls, which Andrew Cuomo controls, was a disaster for many years under his watch. And, um, you know, now is struggling with ridership because of COVID. But pre-COVID, it was a system that was being overwhelmed, that was breaking down constantly, that was not being overseen properly, that was not being invested in properly, and also was wasting a lot of money. So on public transit infrastructure, New York is not successful. He's probably thinking of the bridges that were built. There was the new Tappan Zee Bridge, renamed the Mario Cuomo Bridge, which you know is an accomplishment. It was also missing a public transit link that many experts wanted there. And now it has serious structural and safety flaws. And maybe he's referring to another small bridge connecting Brooklyn and Queens, which uh, is less of an accomplishment. So on infrastructure, a mixed bag at best. Access to voting, New York, for a long time and still to an extent had the equivalent of Jim Crow voting laws that were not implemented out of, you know, a desire to oppress black people, but were implemented because political machines did not want a lot of people voting. So we have some of the worst voter laws in America. That is no exaggeration. We just got the ability to early vote to no fault absentee. The Board of Elections is run by political hacks, quite literally and fails in basically every election. Yes, that is Andrew Cuomo's fault. And no, we are not good at access to voting. So I have really no idea what Joe Biden is talking about. Well, at least he didn't say the pandemic, right? <laughs> I was surprised. That's the go-to usually. <laughs> But I did think it was notable that, that Biden was quick to praise the governor's, you know, alleged uh, successes and kind of glossed over, you know, the 11 women who accused him. That, to me, signals that the Democrat Party might actually be preserving him for a future. And I wanted to mention, um, you know, Caitlin Collins from CNN said, how can you say he was a success when he had these 11 accusers? And lefty Twitter was coming at her left and right. Do you think, I mean, based on your coverage of the governor and the state politics, do you think he's being groomed for a future down the road? It's hard to see because the actual Democrats in New York who work in politics or in elected office are very sick and tired of Andrew Cuomo. Andrew Cuomo did not have friends in government. That's why he had to resign. If he was a Bill Clinton-like figure who is beloved or had real deep alliances with a lot of Democrats, it's possible he survives the scandal. It was quite egregious, but you could see a path forward for him. But the reason he had to go so quickly was so many people from labor unions, from elected officials, legislative leaders, special interest groups, they all collectively decided they had enough of him. So it's hard to imagine the powers that be come together and say, we want more of Andrew Cuomo, when they can really get what they need out of someone else. Kathy Hochul is a moderate Democrat. She's a conventional Democrat. She is someone who will be someone they can work with. So it's just hard to see that all of these various interest groups and all of these power elite types, so to speak, will decide in the future, we must have Andrew Cuomo back on the scene. Well, maybe he's being groomed for a, a duo with his brother on CNN, right? <laughs> it's going to be the Cuomos instead of just Andrew Cuomo. I, a question for you. I saw on your Twitter that you were calling for Chris Cuomo to resign from CNN. Is that a joke or do you really think that he should go? Oh, I do think he should go. It's funny. I, I don't usually get into the business of actually calling for resignations. I, I call for Cuomo's resignation. You know, I, I, co I cover the guy. But yeah, as a, as a journalist, as someone who's written a lot on the media myself for a variety of different outlets, his, his conduct was de deplorable. Uh, it, it's embarrassing. 
I mean, I have my own qualms with CNN, but they do have real stand-up journalists there. And so I feel badly for them, the people who are trying to do their jobs. And it really, it, it makes no sense. You know, Chris Cuomo can be replaced. And the conduct throughout the pandemic was so uh, far beyond the pale of what a journalist should be doing from his interviews with his brother to advising him on political strategy. So the, the whole thing is just a, a total embarrassment. Brian Stelter should be embarrassed for defending him, and they really need to move on. And Ross, the, the Moreland Commission made a brief cameo over the last couple of days. To, just to give people a, a flavor of the tenure of the Cuomo administration, can, can, you, can you kind of sketch out the outlines of, of what the Moreland Commission was and what happened to it? That's a, a deep cut. So the Moreland Commission way back in the days of 2013 was this commission set up by Andrew Cuomo to investigate public corruption. And the idea was you know, he would empower an independent body to root out corruption in New York state. And certainly there's a lot of corruption in the state legislature, in the executive branch and elsewhere. So what happened was this Moreland Commission started to do its job. It asked a lot of questions, it investigated, and then suddenly it started to ask questions of the executive branch because Andrew Cuomo is not necessarily the most ethical person. And so once this started to happen, Cuomo shut down the Moreland Commission immediately the U.S. attorney at the time, Preet Bharara, was quite upset about this and actually used a lot of the findings in the Moreland Commission to undertake successful investigations of state legislators. And eventually, Cuomo's closest aide, Joe Prococo, was convicted in a bribery scheme and sent to prison. Cuomo uh, managed to not be implicated in that, but um, New York was not known for its good governance under Andrew Cuomo shut down his own corruption commission, and it took seven years for him to be ousted. Uh, Ross Barkan, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And we'll tell you what's on our radars up next.